One of my favorite parts about Photoshop is the layers functionality. Layers are great. You're able to customize and build as you're working. A lot of people like to build where they do major steps in the beginning and then start getting nuanced as they will all the way up to the top. Kind of like a little pyramid if you want to think about it that way. Infinite Radiance is no different. Although it looks really simple, there's so many fun things you could do with it. For example, stacking is one of them. Let me show you. So for instance, I have Infinite Radiance open here. And I kind of want to, you know, change the, the focus of this image a little bit. This is an image shot by Akash Bali, and he's a really great cinematic photographer. He's really masterful with his colors, and better for us because the more colors you have in an image, especially reds, greens, and blues, the more you can kind of play around with it. So let's say that I want to have a little bit of a better base to play around with, and I want to change the intention of the image. Well, let's explore a little bit. Let me change the radiance where I'm actually dragging this across the, the color spectrum. And this is one of the bigger bonuses of having a panel like this, you can explore the different luminosity balances of the image. For me, I really love it where you're injecting more light into the yellows. It's really nice. And in case you want to increase or boost the sh uh, saturation a little bit, I can simply add a hue and saturation adjustment layer or a vibrance one, either one. And I can go ahead and increase saturation just a little bit like this. It kind of gives me a nice, uh, a moodier look if I so choose to. And this is a compensating for the fact that I've increased the luminosity a little bit, and it's allowing me to bring back some more saturation as I add this on the second layer. Now, I can actually go ahead and add another uh, radiance panel adjustment layer here, which is a channel mixer. And the reason why I want to add another one is maybe I want to keep what I did initially because I like it a lot, but I want to explore and see if doing something else will further increase uh, my my notion to like this image. And so for me, I use the second one to push and pull colors a little bit more. I should say push and pull the channels a little bit more to change the luminosity and keep the first one as a kind of like a save state. And so that way I know that's going to be there even if I mess up on this one. And I can use the second one to have further refinement in case I want to add, you know, a little bit more balance back into the blues, for instance. So that way I can get a really nice, you know, two shot action going here having one and another. And I can also, don't forget, decrease and increase the intensities. So if I feel like, you know, I want more of a nuanced uh, movement, I can drag it down to 50 and then really have my way with exactly how much I want to push and pull certain values. And the best part is also keep in mind that the values are listed here as well. So you can see exactly how much is deviating from the initial 33%. And you can see that because we're on 50, it's it's quite subtle. It's not you know changing so much in comparison to say like 200, where it's really shifting based on how much I move it away from the center point. So that's kind of how I use stacking. You know the intention is very different for each person. For me, you know when I looked at it, um, I noticed that I wanted more yellows to brighten up so everything else could kind of darken down a little bit, um, and that did happen for the most part. And then the second one here, I want to bring back the blues just a little bit so that there's a little bit more luminosity going into the blues. And I'm going to drag it down to, say, 50 again because I like that nuanced approach. So I'm not doing too, too much. And, and just like that, it kind of brought some balance back. Let's take a look at the before and after by hitting Option and clicking on the eye. You can see this, the subtle shifts that happen, mostly towards saturation. And then from there, I get a good idea of how much I do or do not want to push even further. And ultimately, based on what I saw, I kind of want to do push a little bit further towards the yellows like this. And that way I have independent control of both sides. I think that adds a little bit more of a punch. And obviously, this is very, very personal. I love the way the reds in the glass itself start shimmering a little bit more. I like how the skin starts popping a little bit more. The highlights come off. The skin a little bit nicely as well. There's more tension happening across. Let's take a look at the headdress, for example. See the headdress itself, the luminosity and the reds and the yellows kind of pop off as well without really touching too much of the other stuff. So having these two infinite radiance adjustment layers can kind of offset each other in a way where it saves all the other colors and all, I mean, the luminosity, but it can enhance the luminosity of the yellows and the reds really nicely like that, as you saw. So Hopefully you liked it, and thank you, Akash, for checking us out, letting us use your image. If you would like to see other tutorials, make sure you check out our site at infinite-tools.com and visit the Infinite Radiance section in order to see all of our tutorials.